gentlemen, my name is Johnny G. So a little bit of a background about myself. I am, um, you know, the reason I want to uh, do this talk is because you often hear people that come into programming, they have some sort of background, right? Maybe they were in IT, maybe they knew somebody who knew how to program, or maybe they were designers that wanted to figure out how to program. I'm not that guy. I'm the guy that the most I knew about computers was that I can go to Google and I can play World of Warcraft. Um, even then, I didn't even know how to macro, so it was like, I, I, I'm the computer handicap guy, and I came into this knowing nothing. Um, so, roughly about four months ago, I knew nothing about programming, and uh, I've learned um, a bit since then, and this is sort of my deep dive into depth. And uh, back to my first question, this will help, I believe, or I hope will help anybody that um, there's maybe a bit of loss coming into this, because this is a very scary book to dive into, and if you're a mentor to somebody, hopefully this will give you a little bit of insight into how they feel coming into this. So let's go for a disclaimer here. This is my personal experience. Might not work for you, probably won't work for you. Um, but your discussion is about this. So first of all, before, uh, before we begin, I'd like to give a special thanks here. Um, most of what I do would not be possible without the mentors that help me. And uh, one of them is here tonight, Gabe Schultz, JavaScript wizard. Um, Helping me in the back end is Mike Martinson, uh, Dev of Savvy. He's also in the Green there. And Brett Batney, a friend and God. Okay, and there are a lot more names, but that would take too long. So how do we enter into this? We take the first step, right? Here was my first step. Imagine this, a guy goes into SFU, and he's first year at SFU, and he goes, wow, what should I do? And his friend goes, hey, dude, you should take a programming course. What a liar. So I take the programming course, it's called Intro to Processing. And processing is sort of a language that's built on Java. Now, this is what processing looked like to me. That's, that may not be what it actually was, but that's what I remember. And, you know, needless to say, two classes in, I left the course and I failed the 5%. Um, that was about as much as I had with programming, and then I skipped out for a year because it traumatized my life. <laughs> and then, let's fast forward. Now we're four months ago, in December. I was sitting in my bed about to log into World of Warcraft when I happened upon an ad for a website called Code Academy. Didn't know what it was, I decided to jump in. And when I took my first course on code academy animation on CSS, this is what that felt like to me, versus this. That's a lot more, a um, lot less overwhelming. And I thank God for that because this gave me a second perspective in programming. So step one is to find something easy and just to build upon that. It doesn't have to work, it doesn't have to do anything, but it just has to prove to you that you're not as lost as you think you are. Now here's the next big question. I really want to build blank. And that's, I think that's the key here. That's what you want to start with because, you know, coming into this, um, I started to realize now this is not a world where you can force yourself. Because you're staying at code all day, this is not something where you can force yourself to like it. If you don't like it, you're either going to A, fall on your feet flat, or B, you're going to burn out fumes. So, you really need to know what you want to build. What did I want to build? Well, I'm sort of a narcissist, so I wanted to build myself a website, uh, which I did do. Um, so this was about a day after I did my HTML CSS course. Now, mind you, this website works, but should it exist? No. Um, so I built myself this website, and uh, at the time, I thought it was a god. I had a website, it was online. I mean, I read it to all my friends. Uh, then again, two days later, I redid the website because I thought the first one was disgusting. After I redid the website, I learned a lot. I learned some more CSS elements. Um, and this comes back to, again, really knowing what you want to build because it, it's so hard to learn something and then try to apply it versus, hey, I want to do this, but how do I do that? It, it's, it's the unique, it, it's the curiosity of going, I want to build this thing now I'm going to find this technology to do so versus I'm going to learn all this technology crap and then I'm going to build something out of that because that doesn't work, right? So this is two days into my journey into programming and then I went, it, no, we're not getting there. So this is about a week in. Now here is where I really started to kind of go deep into it. You know, I was having an obligation on CSS course, but I wanted to learn more. I wanted to learn programming, so I took a JavaScript course and I wanted to give up, but I didn't. And we're still getting there, but we're never there. And there's a spoiler, you're never there. Um, and that's key, because this is the fun about it. This comes back to that, if you have the personality of a boring job, 
you know, is not for you, that this is really what it is, because you're never gonna get there, you're never gonna learn everything, right? Um, because if you show up at your job, you show up and do anything, and you're stuck in a loop, it's, it's not fun, it's boring, it's boring, you know? I mean, if you're a programmer, you write that loop, you let the loop do its thing, but you're not the loop yourself, are you? No, you're not, all right. So let's break it out down. Learn to build or build to learn. Again, that's coming back to that point. What, what is your incentive? Is your incentive to learn, 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 and hopefully someday you may be able to build something out of what you've learned, or maybe you want to build something right away. And then no matter how hard it is, you have that, you have that it, until you find a way to build it. And that should, that should be the way you approach it, at least in my opinion, and that's what we're doing. So now that you're kind of got a sense of what you're doing, you're coming into it, you think, do the pros really know what to do? Because whenever I see Gabe, or whenever I see Brent, or some other TA or a Coke or anybody that's a lot better than me at this, and I see what they do, they just seem to know what they're doing. I can spend a day on a problem, they can solve it in five minutes, so how do they do that? I want to tell you a little bit of a story. Brent actually invited me to his house to kind of have a session where I just watched him code. I didn't do anything, I watched him do his job, and that's where it clicked for me. They don't know what they're doing. They don't shit up about what they're doing, they know. But what they do know is how to solve a problem better than you. Now, it's not that you don't know how to solve a problem, it's just that you don't know how to tackle a problem correctly. Right? Brent will look something up, then he Google that. He take a snippet of code, he try, he figure out why it doesn't work, then he Google it again, then he put it in the bugger, and he do all these steps. But in the end, he doesn't know what he's doing. He's just figuring it out, same as you. Except he can do it faster and better than you, and he gets pretty money to do it. That's pretty much all it is, right? So while you're behind, you really gotta stay ahead. This is a screenshot of my GitHub. I wasn't lying to you when I said it. I didn't know this prior to four months ago. See that? My GitHub was already created a long time ago because I took that intro to processing course in which I quit after two days. But, I really started using it here in January, and I went pound. And not because, you know, not I didn't go ham because I, I said, oh, I want to learn this stuff, I wanted to build something, and I was learning while I was building, and that's awesome, because I'm getting something out of it, and I'm learning, right? A few other ways that I stay ahead, and hopefully that you can stay ahead, is that everything takes once to learn, and twice to understand, okay? Now, a lot of places will tell you that, you know, Going into programming, let's say if you're going into any school, uh, there's a slogan, you don't need to know anything, you come in and teach it. That's not really true. Sure, you don't need to know anything, but you gotta stay ahead of the game. Because if I were to go into a programming school knowing nothing, then I'd probably fall behind. But if I knew, if I learned on my own, and I understood the core principles, then when I go in and I learn something for the second time, I really start to catch the nitty details that is what it's all about, right? Um, I have learned HTML CSS extensively on my own, and over auditing a code core bootcamp, I see one of the instructors, Brent, talk about HTML CSS, and I noticed that in the beginning, some of the students were very frustrated at his teaching style, because he was talking fast, and he wasn't going over things properly, but that's because they didn't take that once to learn and twice to understand. Once you already know what you're looking at, you start to pick up on the naked details, you go, oh my gosh, I didn't know you could do that, I didn't know you could do that. I didn't know you could do that. And that's where the true value comes in, right? And that's when you start to notice that a problem waters down. Because when you don't take that once to learn something, a problem is just a problem. But when you take that one time to learn something, a problem starts to become smaller problems. And those start to become smaller problems. And it scales down to the point where it's just micro dots that you can figure out and map together and map together and map back together to solve that problem. And you can't do that if you don't take that once to learn. So knowing your tools and resources, extremely, extremely helpful. Um, and I'll have a slide on this later, but coming into this, there is no way you can do this on your own, right? Your tools are Google, your tools are Stack Overflow, your tools are Hacker News. Know your tools and know your resources. And resources are very important because I took the Web Fundamentals course over Code Core, and while some of the stuff taught in the course I had learned on my own already, the true resource there was the valuable TAs, was their invaluable advice, because anytime I had a difficult problem or a situation that I couldn't solve, I, I could go about them and I could ask them, uh, what their take on it was, and they showed me how they broke down the problem. Because
because I have only seen that problem once, and they have seen it once, they've learned it, and they've understood it, and they can show me. So that's knowing good tools and resources and how to access them in the best of your abilities. And even after all that, you may feel overwhelmed. I still do. I don't know what the hell is going on. I mean, you know, I write the code, but do I really know how it works? Not to that extent. And that's feeling overwhelmed. That's feeling like it's imposter syndrome. You feel like, you know, you know what you're doing, but you don't really know what you're doing. And that's okay, because everybody feels overwhelmed. I talk to people way more experienced than I am at programming, and they all feel overwhelmed, and some of them don't know what they're doing. And they're not supposed to, and that's okay. Once you accept that feeling, once you accept that state of being overwhelmed, everything becomes so much easier and just all the things on your shoulders. So some of your resources. Google, Twitter, which I am forced to use now, Stack Overflow, which I spent more time on than Facebook, and CodePen, because you know I like CSS. So here's some useful tips here and there that I picked up, and maybe will be helpful to you, and maybe will be very trivial to some of you, but just uh, stay with me. So clean up thy code. I wrote a uh, I wrote a project here, and this is one of my controllers. It's my post controller, and this is the search method on the post controller. Now you can query the search, and this is what will happen. Okay? I thought it was a genius. I was like, oh my god, this works. And then I took this again, he's like, this doesn't work. And it doesn't, and I'll tell you why. So, when you look at this control, actually, you know what? Some of the more experienced people in the crowd here, um, I like to raise hand. If you made a pull request from GitHub and you saw this, would you appreciate it? Raise your hand. Who would appreciate this from GitHub? No? no? If you made a pull request from GitHub and it looked like this, who would appreciate it more? Ah, uh, uh, okay, okay, cool. So, back to this. Now, it's important to know that. Yes, you can write code, but it may not be the best way to write code. And this is where really knowing your tools and resources can help because some stuff you can learn on your own, but some stuff you just can't. Best method, you can't learn on your own. You need to, you need to access those tools and resources in order to figure out what's best. You know, all this stuff can be put into service methods and help, but I didn't know that until I went to Gabe and said, hey, Gabe, this isn't normal. Why is this 100 lines? I read somewhere that your controller should be over 100 something lines, and this one method is 100. Have that curiosity, approach your tools and resources, and figure out your problem. That's what the best of them do, and that's what you should do if you want to become one of the best of them. Now, that looks a lot cleaner. That sends a call to a service object, which contains a few more service objects, and it just boils down. It's a problem, breaking down into more problems, breaking down into more problems from before. Okay. So, Another thing that I sort of picked up on my own, and maybe trivial gets a lot of you, is that if there is a problem and it has an error message, read the error message. Because I've had too many times where I've asked questions, and the, it, not to ridicule me, but the person Googled my exact question into Google, clicked on the first thing, and there was my answer. And that's when it dawned on me. If you have a question, most likely, most likely, you don't have to ask someone else. Most likely, if you just dug hard enough, you figure it out yourself if you just read the error messages or if you just post it on Google. Now, this does two things. Number one, it shows that you, you, know, you have that innate kind of problem-solving aspect of yourself and you can go out there and figure things out on your own, you know, uh, if for some reason there was no one around to help you. And number two, it really, really, really makes people like you because nobody likes something that pokes their shoulders and hey, hey, what's an HTML file? Hey, what's this? No. All right, so next thing that I picked up, a um, little bit on my own, is just that repos love repos. It's the instruction manual repo. Um, because I've looked at a, some repos that don't have repos and I've lost. Now this may just be my personal experience, but hopefully this will help you in some way. This is the readme for one of my repos that I did, um, the project we saw with the S controller. Uh, this is the readme for that repo, and um, it's always nice to just give yourself a very clean readme, a very clean kind of uh, feel for other people when they run your projects. And most importantly, when you're just starting out, when in doubt, say yes. If an opportunity presents itself, you say yes, because good things happen when you say yes. Uh, over at Cocor, we had a little bit of a lunch and learn, and I was approached by a Brazilian man that I do not know. 
He came up to me and he introduced himself. He said, tomorrow I'm doing a hackathon. Want to join me? I said, no, I don't know you. Uh, he said, come on, it's a 48 hour hackathon. We can do it together. You're here before we've got a team going. You want it? I said, sure. So for the next 48 hours, I didn't sleep, and I spent myself in a little cubicle uh, with three strange people. And uh, they were very nice, and we built that little project. Now, to my surprise, and I think to their surprise, to everybody's surprise, we actually made top 15 out of over 1,000 contestants, and we were flown to Toronto to have a little trip and compete in the final. Actually, one of our team members right here, Ellie. And it's, it's an amazing experience. You get to meet amazing people, and you get to build something that you love. And that all came from me saying yes. So say yes to opportunities, and I believe good things will happen to you. More benefits of saying yes. Um, presentations, meeting awesome people, and theater. All right, so I talked a little bit about the code. But it's not all about the code. At the end of the day, it's really about the people you meet, the relationships you make, and you know, your, it's your connections, it's your ability to stay in touch with people. Um, it's, your, it's your ability to increase your presence, because if you don't increase your presence, no matter how good you are, nobody's going to know you care, right? A website can be the most amazing website in the world, but if you can't get to the front page, then what good is that? Nothing. How do you increase your presence? Um, you go to every meetup you can. You go to every meetup you can because they're awesome. Uh, there are a lot of resources, like I mentioned, you just have to find them. And they don't blog. Blogs are cool. Because whenever I learn something cool and uh, interesting in a new programming uh, aspect, I, I record it. I put it in a blog post. And I save it somewhere. It's just for myself, or it's for anybody that wants to find out about it. And most of all, be human. Be human with the people you come in contact with. Even though you write code, you're still dealing with people. And get to know them on a personal level, you know? I mean, like, they're cool people. Like, Gabe likes shirts with dinosaurs and labels on them. I know that now. Um, it, they're cool people. Get to know them. <laughs> I get to know them on a human level. And be passionate about your projects. Um, because it comes back to the whole thing again. You can't really force it on yourself, you just gotta be passionate, right? Engage with others, remember people's names. They get mad, you just call them dude or guy or buddy. Um, make yourself know. And thank you very much. If you want to find me online, here are some ways to stop me. My name is Johnny G. Thank you very much.